Well, hello a new day. I am back to share my heart with you. Thank you, Pastor Mark and Carmen, for letting me come and share what God has put on my heart. And boy, it has a lot to do with crayons. That's right, it has to do with crayons and color. Well, before I get started, I want to thank Carrie from Illinois, my wonderful dear friend. Mwah. Love her. She, I had mentioned that I saw this shirt online and it says, Broken crayons still color. And then I went, what? What? Then my, my mind and my soul and my spirit just started thinking about broken crayons and how they can color. And then I started relating it to God and how God uses people that are broken. See, we could easily take away from our, we can easily think we have too many flaws, we have too many weaknesses. God's not against us and he is for us. See, the cool part is a crayon is pretty magnificent in its wholeness, right? It, it's easy to color with, it's, it's convenient for us, right? It's very convenient to use a full crayon. But if we use the small crayon, it's not quite as convenient. Some of us, we might be broken like this crayon, right? And we might be a little bit smaller, but this crayon, the cool part, is it still colors, just like this nice full one. See, we are called because we are qualified. We are qualified, why? Because a broken soul will produce a crop. A broken cloud will give us some rain. A broken grain will give us bread. Broken bread gives us strength. Broken people do great things. So, you know, let's talk about broken. Some of us are spiritually broken. Some of us are actually physically broken, where our bodies are just not what we were hoping they would be. Maybe you were born broken. Maybe, maybe you got broken throughout your life. You know, maybe you got sick or you, you broke, you, you lost a leg or, or you lost a limb of some sort or you, you've lost your eyesight, whatever it is. You're, you're the broken piece of crayon, right? That, that actually still colors. And there is a lot of hope in that this broken crayon will soon be a full crayon with God. God has got the power to make us healed. He can make us new and we don't have to be broken, right? So I wanna talk about some really great examples of people that I actually looked into that are really, really broken, like super broken. And I was thinking, how do they do it? How do they just not say, I'm done, I don't wanna do it anymore, I'm out. How do they stick to it? Okay. All right, well, I wanna talk about two people, Nick Vujicic and Helen Keller. My goodness, two great examples of people who have overcome what is going on with them and they're living life and they live life and they became very, 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 very famous people. So Nick Vujicic, I'm just going to call him Nick. I'm not going to say his last name anymore because I'm going to say it wrong over and over and over. <laughs> He's the man who founded Life Without Limbs. If you haven't seen or heard this man speak, he gives small testimonies, he gives big testimonies, but he talks about a life that he lived with no arms and no legs. I don't know about you all, but if I didn't have arms and legs, that would be very, very difficult for me to maintain and to be happy and to have a fulfilled life. I also wanna talk about Don Witte. He was a chaplain. He was born with cerebral palsy, a, con a condition that affects basic motor skills. Basically, his form of communication was very, 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 very broken. But he was able to push through that and reach lots of people through his challenging circumstance. And of course, there's Helen Keller, somebody who was born without sight. Not only did she not have sight, but she could not hear and she could not speak. There was no communication 
for her to be able to tell what was going on in her life and what was happening to her. Jeremiah 29 11, this right here. I believe God can use anyone to do anything. And Nick believed this very much through and through. He believed that God was going to use him regardless of the fact that he couldn't walk around and he couldn't use his arms. But he had a face and he had eyes and he had communication and he used it. I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Prosper you. Plans to use you. Broken or not broken. Plans to give you hope for your future. See, that's the thing is hope for your future. See, Helen Keller, she had hope that, that she would be able to someday communicate with somebody. And as a, a young child, that was very hard. Very, very hard. See, God has a plan, and it includes coloring a great story of you in your life. Psalms 139 reminds us that God created me to shape me, right? You are wonderfully made. You are actually made perfect. And how you become or what you become or whatever you turn into along the way is also perfect. See, oftentimes the world perceives that, that as not good trash oh you don't have all your are your arms you're not good enough for a softball team oh you don't have your legs you can't play on our basketball team you know the world the world says we can't but see God says we can there's no limits with God there's no it does not nothing stops the colors keep coloring right they keep coloring nobody can stop the colors and then eventually they're molded together with God's help to become a full crayon and then it doesn't matter what the world thinks, right? He uses us despite our broken. See, this is a mighty declaration of power. That's how powerful our God is. We are not defined by our disabilities, right? We are not defined by our brokenness. 1 Corinthians 12, 9. When you are weak, you are strong. Believe it or not, when you're at your weakest point, you are at your strongest. God delights in our weakness. He actually delights in those who are weaker. He wants to use them because he molded them that way, right? He wants to make them just exactly what they need to be. Helen Keller is, there's a movie they made. It's called Miracle Worker. And if you haven't seen that movie, you should watch it because it is only 23 minutes long and it shows how a woman came into their lives and Helen Keller was struggling from 19 months old she was deaf and blind and her, she couldn't talk to her parents and they were they wanted to actually get rid of her they didn't want her anymore because she she wasn't able she was always mad and angry and frustrated and she was always acting out and and nobody could tell her we love you because they, they didn't they, she couldn't hear him she couldn't see him and they would give her candy to make her happy and they they continued to do that and as they did that Helen she could not communicate so along came a woman who had similar in things going on in her life with being able to hear and she began to work with Helen she began to to spend hours and countless hours with her, just like God does with us. He spends countless hours with us to help us use our broken to benefit others and ourselves. We, we can stay sad and bummed that we're broken, or we can take it and we can let God use it, right? So there was so much stress in the family with Helen that they, they were ready to ship her off. Well, that's not exactly what happens. Along comes this lady and she sits down at a a, a water hole I'll make a long story short but she pumps that water into her hand and then she starts speaking in her hand with words and letters and she sticks the water in her face and she speaks the letters and this goes on and on and on and on and on and and for like weeks and then finally it clicked it clicked and Helen was able to to, to understand that that was water you know that is just what God's doing with us right He's constantly talking to us and feeding us so that we can communicate with him. 
and we can communicate with others and we can use what's broken for something amazing because like right right now Helen Keller well she used to she's not here anymore but she was amazing she she went to college she got degrees and she began to teach and share and she was an outstanding woman never given up that's exactly what happened she never gave up there's a quote that Helen that she said and I really really like it it says optimism is the faith that leads to achievement the faith see with God it takes a lot of faith trusting that he's actually that he's working he's working in our broken right See, she says, no things can be done without hope and confidence. Same thing with God. You can't do it without hope. You can't do it without confidence in Him. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Oh. You, so you're meaning to say that if I have like the perfect life and nothing's ever broken, that it's not... What? No, it's true. God wants to use us to build our character. He wants things to get in our way. So we wake up. And we see, we, we develop the ability to help others and, and to be able to, to understand maybe what others are going through. Remember this, what once we had and enjoyed, we can never lose. Let me tell you this, if you've ever done something that you love and enjoy, you'll never forget that you did it. You'll always remember the joy that comes from doing it and you'll want to do it again. Kind of, kind of, kind of happens with donuts too for me. No, that's a little off topic, but we can never lose it, right? All things we love become part of us, right? And if you love the Lord, He's going to become part of you, and He is going to be this box of crayons right here, full, filled, and loved. Okay. Every struggle is a victory. It is. Because you're going to overcome that struggle, right? Yes. And Lando said, Amen. See, God believes in you just like Helen's teacher believed in her. The key is reading and communicating. Right? We got to be in God's word. We got to be digging in there. We got to be pushing in, pressing in. And when the struggles come and it's hard, we got, we, when, when we feel like we're we're so broken that's when we need to press in we got to dig in deeper okay don't be sad that you're broken don't be sorry that you're broken ask God to help you with putting this broken into a full cramp okay do you want to fly like you want to fly like a bird and have wings don't let your broken be an excuse that holds you back from serving Jesus okay so Luke 14 12 through 14 says here when you give a banquet gathering invite the poor crippled and the lame and the blind are you reaching out to those who are broken because that's exactly what Jesus did he wanted to help everybody no matter what what condition they were in or what was going on in their lives Jesus was representing God's love, which was unending and unchanging. See, my, one of my favorite speakers actually is actually Nick now, because through preparing this message, I got to watch a lot of things that he spoke on. And he's a man who loves Jesus. He took the impossible and he did not allow his disability to hold him back and he actually let God use him so when he was broken and he was when he was growing up a young young lad boy in school they made fun of him they ridiculed him they shamed him oh my goodness look at you you got no legs no arms look at oh my goodness what you're not gonna be worth anything to anyone and he got that in his head when he was younger in his teenage years he started getting that in his head and he started to believe it and that's the problem see if we start believing what we think is that's 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 a train wreck okay he got he became suicidal he didn't want to do it anymore because he didn't want to be there 
living that life thinking he didn't fit in. Well, that's not exactly what ended up happening. Because he was actually he was actually raised to look at more of the bright side of things. As he was growing up, his parents always talked about the bright side. So he began to think, what is the bright side? Like, where can I find my happiness? And then he began to, he met Jesus, okay? As he grew older and older and older into adult life, he got closer and closer and closer to the Lord. And he began to speak passionately about Jesus over many, over young people, old people, any kind of people. See, he chased after his dreams. And his dreams are to have legs. Yeah, believe it or not, he still will today tell you that he is believing God will give him legs. And guess what? God's going to give him legs. Whether it happens now, it hasn't happened yet, but that's okay. Because he has faith and hope and belief that God is going to heal him and that he is going to have legs at some point in his life. He does have kind of a little leg. He has a limb. It's kind of cool. You got to check it out. So God took broken crayons with his life, blended them all together, and made a very successful, happy man who's married, has lots of children. I think he has four plus kids. It's pretty amazing how a man who, who just has a torso was able to just flourish, flourish, and have a family, and, and, and raise kids. See, his focus on life was his hope, his attitude was everything. He believes in it's fully our attitude. It's what we are saying about ourselves. It's what we're saying about our situations. He, he doesn't believe that he's weak. He believes that he's just as strong as anybody else. And nothing holds him back. He will try everything. The guy even golfs. He does. He golfs. Believe it or not, he golfs. He does everything. He does not set limitations on his life because he's broken and God doesn't want us to set limitations on our lives he wants us to to meet what our, our life expectancy is supposed to be our gift we're supposed to be flourishing from whatever it is that we have within our broken he wants you God wants you faith lives beyond hope faith does live beyond hope it's a big step. Faith sees beyond your distractions. See, your distractions, they're going to mess up what you believe in and the faith and hope that you have if you get in your head. I talk about getting in our heads a lot when I speak because our heads are probably everybody's problem in the world. Because we think that we think what we think about the broken. We think that the world's com just completely broken. It is, maybe, but it doesn't have to be. God's going to God's gonna mend it. He's going to fix it, okay? But we have to have faith and hope and believe that. We can't, we can't just sit and say, oh, it's just going to be bad. It's just going to be bad. It's just all bad. No, no, there's a whole box. See, a whole box. Look at them all. Full crayons, I promise. I won't take them all out and pr prove it to you, but these are full crayons. Lots of them, right? So there's a film that actually is out called uh, Butterfly Circus. And this is a short film produced by, by Nick. And it, it's very, very short also. And you can watch it as well. And it is t about a circus that br brought in a bunch of broken people. Some, a woman that was a prostitute and she became amazing in the circus. Um, another guy who was an alcoholic and he became amazing in this circus and he took he he's this this circus leader grabbed broken people specifically and showed them that they can be part of something great they don't have to just be broken okay they can do something amazing and they did they got together in the circus and they started to do amazing things and then guess who was lurking from outside oh it was Nick Nick he wanted to be part of the circus but he's like, oh, I'm not good enough for the circus. I have no arms, I have no legs. I can't do anything in a circus. I can't, I can't, have nothing. Well, guess what? He dove from 50 feet or whatever it is into a small pool and it was amazing. And the circus was complete and he played a huge role in that. 
See, you can, it, the world is then displayed to see that you're perfect. You're not broken. But the cool part of it is that Nick didn't need that, really. He just needed Jesus as a savior and his faith and hope and his attitude towards that. See, in John 1, 9, 1 through 12, or 1 through 2, sorry, 1 and 2, da 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 they ask a question here. Why was a man born blind? So they want to know why. Why would you allow him to be born blind? Verse 1, And Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from birth. Verse 2, And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Why was he born blind? Did somebody do wrong? Yeah. Do you think that maybe something happened to you because you did something wrong? No. No. That's not how God works. That's not how it works. Verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinner nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. See, God was going to use him. He was going to use him. Just like he wants to use you. He wants to use you. You're this broken crayon. He wants to use you. Let's jump to verse 10. Who, was heal who healed you? They asked. The blind man to them, the man they called Jesus, made mud, spread it over my eyes, and told me to go wash my face. Guess what? He did exactly that. And then, just like that, boom. Yeah, right here. He was this. Oh, wait. Wait. He was really little because he had no sight. That's awful. You cannot see things. He was this. And now, he's this. Why? Because our Savior wanted it. God wanted him to be healed. Happened. God again used this ability and he restored to new. He wants to restore you too, just like Nick believes he's going to have legs someday. He doesn't cast us down. He doesn't push the broken aside. He wants us to trust, believe, and reach out in faith that he is going to take care of whatever's broken. Whatever it is. Maybe you're sick all of a sudden. Maybe you've been in a hospital bed for two weeks. That's awful. We have a really close friend who's been battling. But you know what? He has not lost faith. Every post he makes is, I trust God is going to heal me. I trust God is going to make me right. Yep, God's going to make him right. And he's not going to step away from that. Right? We don't have to stay broken. Recently, I've had a little bit of a heart problem. Just, just a small one. It messed with my physical ability to do some things that I want to do. But it never affected my spiritual. I may be broke physically, but I am not broken spiritually. God, God is still my God. I still worship Him, praise Him, and serve Him, even though I'm broken. So, let me ask you a question. Are you broken? Are you broken? Are you physically, emotionally, spiritually? Are you broken? Are you allowing God to use your broken to serve others? What's your attitude doing? Is it holding you back or is it driving you? Where is it going? Where are you going with it? What are you doing with your broken if you are that broken human? Don't expect what's happening to you right now to be your life sentence. Guess what? My heart condition, that ain't no life sentence. No way. Not acceptable. I'm going to live on and I'm going to keep living on. And I'm going to keep going and keep serving my God. Same with you. Don't let your broken stop you. Ask God. Ask him to use you. Ask him to mold you. Ask him to take these and turn it into this ask regardless of what you've been through or what you've done see all of our uh, we all make mistakes right we all make mistakes but you are not a mistake we make them but we are not them we still have a purpose see we all have a purpose broken or unbroken 
wherever you are in here. You might be bruised and battered. Still can be a positive outcome, regardless of how beat down you are, regardless of how frustrated you are because you don't have something that others do. And I want to close with this. See, Nick, he's prayed for a miracle. He's prayed for legs. He's prayed for arms. He hasn't got it yet, but he says he leans into this one verse, which I think everyone should hold on to with all their might. Romans 8, 28. All things come together for the good. All things. That all. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's all. That's these and these together. All of them. For those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Okay? So if you don't have Jesus in your heart and you don't love him, this is probably going to be a lot harder to handle. And it probably will stay this way. But this could be your future. That isn't a sales tactic or anything. But if you want to have a fulfilled life and you want Jesus to help you, you got to have him as your savior. Okay? Time's running out, people. You got to have God on your side. And the only way to get that is to ask. Right? And to trust. Romans 8, 28. All things. All things. Right? Obstacles are opportunities. Take that with you. Obstacles are opportunities. Don't look at them as something bad. Look at them as an opportunity to serve others, help others, help yourself, find new ways, find new things. Oh, so much can come from, some, from anything, right? Your attitude drives God's ability to use us. What is your attitude? Hang on to having, a, having an attitude that everything is going to work out for the good because you trust Jesus and you have him in your heart as your savior. Remember, we cannot do broken alone, okay? If, if you're out there and you're broken and you need us to contact you, you want somebody to talk to because you're, you're emotionally or spiritually broken. And I mean, obviously we can't come over with new legs, but we can, we can come and we can help you with your heart and your, your Jesus opportunity that if you need that opportunity, contact us because we want to tell you how. We want to tell you just how easy it is to be a full crayon filled with God's faith, hope, and love. Okay? And then you'll have joy through your broken. Just like Nick. He is a happy, happy, happy man because he has all that. And I, he's such a great example. So anyway, church. I want you to know that if you want to check out any of the links into the movies that I had mentioned, I'm going to drop them in the comments so that you can actually hit the link and you can go right to the movie. Um, they're great. I, I was really, really blessed by them. Um, and also we want to let you know that you can connect with us all week long. Okay. So if, if you want to start mending your broken, getting connected is a really good way to do that. Mondays and Wednesdays we pray. We have all kinds of wonderful things on our app that you can connect to using the Word of God, watching movies, listening or watching small videos, listening to somebody speak the Word. There's so many opportunities and we want to we want to serve you and that's how we can do it. So church, I really love you all and I hope you all have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.